Okay, great. Thanks, thanks, Misha, for the introduction. So, yeah, so everyone can share my uh, can hire, uh, can hire my screen, right? So, let's begin. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's a great honor to be here for the last session for the last paper. So, hope everything still enjoys the virtual conference. So, this work is joint work with uh, Yuan Yuan Shi and Boston Zhang. Uh, and uh, Yuan Yuan Shi actually is graduating this year and going to be a faculty at UC San Diego next year. So yeah, I uh, hope you can join this talk. Uh, so uh, here is our motivation for the problem. And uh, in this task, we want to solve the voltage regulation problem in the distribution grid. So uh, the task is quite straightforward. So basically we want to maintain the nodal voltage magnitudes for each different bus. Well, there are some power injection constraints. So for example, we want to minimize the sum of all the voltage magnitude. We want to say there is a reactive power injections because due to the distributed energy resources. And also there are power flow equations. So you need to hold the constraint at each time step. But the challenge is say, uh, if we uh, formulate the problem, so how do we to control or how to control with the system, especially in the distribution grid. Sometimes the topology are unknown and the system, system parameters are also unknown. For example, uh, the line conductance reactance and all the parameters there. And also the power flow is itself is nonlinear. So if it's nonlinear and uh, not convex functions, so how do you do the control over the nonlinear power flows? And for conventional approach, when people are trying to approach the voltage regulation problem in the distribution grid, it's usually taken some previous step before the final control step. So if the topology is unknown, people often take a step for identification of the topology as well as the parameters. And after that, uh, one stream may be using a linearized power flow by linearizing the AC power flow equations to the DC or linear rest versions. And the other stream is to do some uh, convex reformulations of the problem. Say, for example, uh, one famous approach is to do uh, uh, over the uh, land loss such, such that by doing the uh, uh, transferring the equation to the uh, inequality, you can transfer the uh, original non convex problem to a second order comb programming. In such case, uh, you can solve the original voltage regulation problem. But the problem is say, uh, if we have a step for identification about the topology, uh, this may require very accurate topology and not parameters, but in some cases it's not actually not true, uh, since you may encounter some errors in the signals and parameters estimation stage. And also this uh, definitely requires uh, more efforts for the problem. And also uh, the distribution system in many cases are, are known itself. So in, intrinsically this problem is say, if we do not know something, can we do something? So there may be this kind of com compounding errors of both doing the identification as well as doing the control. So uh, how to solve the problem? And here is our proposed method. Uh, we propose a neural network, specifically architecture that is called input convex neural networks based on our previous works. So this way we can uh, represent the unknown distribu uh, distribution grid using a data-driven proxy. And the overall idea is say, after getting the underlying distribution grid, we can get more measurements from swamp meters for all the uh, reactive, reactive power and active power in injections, as well as the voltage magnitude and phases. And after that, uh, we do a control step over the neural network and uh, it can be served as a plug and play players for the modeling and optimal regulation stage. For example, uh, once we get the optimal uh, control problem, we get the objectives and constraints, we can use the trained neural networks to do the optimal reactive power injections for the problem. So there's not a uh, very explicit modeling of topology stage. And the problem itself is very accurate because the neural network is a very strong representation of the underlying physical models. And also since it's a 
input convex one. So we can show later this is a, already a convex problem. So you are always guaranteed to find the uh, best or the optimal regulation signals. And uh, let's take a deeper look of the problem. So for the water regulation problem in the distribution grids, people are trying to find a group of reactive power injections such that the voltage magnitude are deviates as least as possible. Well, there are power flow of constraints over each bus and even each lens. And uh, in the cases of distribution grids, we may not know the power flow equations due to the unknown parameters of J and B for each LAN. And also, uh, alternative here may be say, oh, can we train a data-driven model to estimate the relation? Say, for example, if we do not know the power flow, can we directly use the neural network to estimate the relationship between the active and reactive power injection to the nodal voltage magnitude deviations. And this is like the basic training stage. So basically you have the unknown distribution grid, you get all the measurements for PQ weight data, and you can train a neural network based on a loss function, pretty fun. And after that, uh, that's a more interesting problem. So how do we say, to integrate the neural network to the control or regulation problem. And this may be a little bit harder because normally when people say there's a neural network, it's a very complicated uh, kind of functions. And uh, especially in current era of deep, deep learning, the neural network itself is very complicated and complex. So when you have to control, maybe the problem itself is not a convex problem and you cannot get the tractable optimal solutions. But what we did here is say, can we use the learned model that's denoted as FI for each different bus? And with this kind of unknown topology and parameters, uh, if the parameters are known, a previous result has shown the problem itself can be uh, formulated as a SOCP problem and the convex relaxation are actually tight. So what we do here is say, uh, if the problem itself is a convex problem, so why not using a convex neural network or a neural network proxy to estimate the convex modeling? And after that, we can uh, also do the convex optimization over the neural networks. So what we have done here is say, uh, during training stage or during learning stage, you are learning a neural network, but doing regulation or control stage, you predefine a regulation cost function and your overall goal is to minimize the cost, but at the same time, you have the optimal control uh, constraints. So we are integrating the neural networks as a convex optimization modules. And this requires a redesign of neural network. So previously when people are talking about neural network, the structure is quite fixed. So basically, if I'm talking about fully connected layers, you have this kind of activation functions to provide any nonlinear relatives. And also you are doing stochastic gradient descent over the network weights to train the neural network. So basically what we did here is similar. You have the inputs of the power injections, both active and reactive, and you have the output as a voltage magnitude deviation and you train this neural network. And due to the uh, strong representation ability of the neural network, you can train this function to a very small loss. But the problem is say, if you are doing training, it is good for fitting, but may not be good for the closed loop control. And what we did here is say, uh, can we design specifically for architecture that is designed to convex problem because the problem itself can be relaxed as a very tight convex optimization problem. And the design principles are very actually quite intuitive. So based on the composition of convex functions uh, with a inner function of a convex non-decreasing function and an outer layer of convex function, the composition of two functions are actually convex. So uh, we hold this through for the neural network. So basically we constrain the neural network widths as non-negative functions. And also we use some specific uh, kind of uh, activation function, for example, like ReLU function, which is convex as well as not decreasing. So it satisfies our design requirements. Uh, 
by integrating all the components together, we can actually get uh, input convex neural networks. So this actually finished our story here. So basically doing training, you are still training as a normal uh, neural net network, but the network structure itself is guaranteed to be a convex function. And doing control, we integrate the SAN into the optimal control loop. So basically, uh, after training, you fix the SAN weights as a proxy model for your physical grids, and uh, you have a regulation goal of minimizing re regulation costs. And by doing implementation, we just uh, do project gradient descent to make sure all the constraints are satisfied. Well, the problem solved is a convex. So we can guarantee to go to the optimal solution. And here are some simulation results based on our approach. And we also compare with several other baselines. So the benchmark is using uh, SLCP formulation, using the distant flow equations uh, with known topology. So in this one, you actually expect the solution to be exact and to be optimal. So we may compare other uh, formulations with this benchmark formulations. So, uh, and the other three are more practical setup. So basically, if you do not know the topology, uh, we can firstly definitely do a topology identification step. After that, you have the uh, all the model parameters and you can use a linear regression to do the model using the DC power flow. And also you can use standard neural network uh, that is not a convex reformulation of the neural networks. And the last one is our essay uh, approach. And we compare basically two stuff. So first one is to say, uh, how about the multi-regulation performance? And second one, uh, if there can be kind of performance guarantee for the computation time. And for the first one, we actually compare the fitting performance uh, because we want to make sure the neural network is a great accurate identification step for the underlying physical models. And uh, we actually find the performance of the normal standard neural network is nearly the same as the SAN, although the SAN has some constraints over the neural, neural network architecture. But as you can see from the uh, table here, uh, both SAN and uh, can achieve much smaller error than using the standard linear regression of DC power flow models. And also, uh, next time we compare about the voltage regulation performance. So basically, we compare whether the voltage is deviating uh, largely from the original predefined voltage level. So basically, as you can see from the table, both the uh, for the both the 13 bus and 123 bus cases, the ICN can achieve very small deviation, and it is comparable to the SOCP problem. But if you go to like the normal neural networks or linear models, the results are much worse. And the last comparison is over the computation time. So essentially this one we want to say by using the SOCP formulation itself may take a quite a long time to solve the problem using the solver. But by using the SAN model here, we are essentially doing a quick computation over the neural network by using current standard modern uh, neural network architecture like uh, from TensorFlow or PyTorch. And this one actually can save us from the large computation burden. For example, uh, in the 123 bus cases, we can only use around uh, one ton of the time by compared to SOCP. Uh, this one just uh, uh, zooms into the problem about the 113 bus for each uh, us, as you can see, the IC uh, voltage regulation performance is much better than the linear or neural network counterparts. And uh, this one may be explained for partly by this kind of uh, observation. So linear model may be due to the inaccurate modeling style, while the standard neural network also is very good at modeling the problem, but uh, since the neural network is a non-convex formulation, so you may be stuck at some local optima. So when you are doing regulations, you cannot achieve the comparable performance than the SAN counterparts. And essentially what we want to convey information here is say, uh, by doing this kind of SAN model, 
we can balance the model tractability as well as the control performance. And we are integrating uh, convex functions into the unknown convex optimization problem itself. And here is a conclusion. So we propose this data-driven framework for distribution grid voltage regulation. And the advantage of the proposed algorithm is say uh, when we are facing an unknown distribution grid, we can still do the optimal uh, voltage control. But at the same time, the performance is very good and uh, it's comparable to the known model SOCP formulations. And uh, there may be many extending works to our future works to this uh, kind of application. So first of all, maybe there are uh, load uncertainties as well as some parameters uncertainties. So how do we model the uncertainties using some data-driven technique, uh, for example, neural network. Another problem is say, all the current uh, presentation here is a, uh, is a centralized version. So how do we extend the neural net formulation to distribute the algorithm that may be of uh, practical interest for the utilities. And all the codes are available on the GitHub page. And if you have any question, just uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, that's it, thanks. Thank you, Izzy. Um, uh, yeah, so good talk, even though you are two minutes over. Uh, so for okay, three sorry. remaining minutes, we have three questions. Um, there in the in the Q and A, but um, uh, if you don't see them, maybe I, I can I can read them. Um, sure. So in this kind of closed loop application of neural network, can there be any problems from wrong in complete learning? So is the control actions distort the learning results? That's from Robert. Right. So basically, uh, we would say, uh, we would argue, so this approach is a separate approach, separate stage for both training and uh, regulation. So essentially, uh, when we are do, doing training, we assume all the data is there. So the control is not affecting the training stage. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, another question from uh, Parikshit Parik. Um, how uh, the ICNN based method perform in complete, uh, in comparison to neural network based methods when neural network is used directly to learn optimal control decision via optimal control solution based training samples? And a uh, sub question um, what can be said about uh, cases when uncertainty is there? Uh, in a load injection? So yeah, actually this is a very good question. So uh, basically I think there are two kind of setups. So why you say, can we use neural network to directly learn from the uh, input to the action? So this is in line of the current work of reinforcement learning. And other line work of work is uh, more similar to us. So basically you learn the model itself and then uh, doing some control step. So essentially, uh, one significant distinction here is say, our work can guarantee the solution is optimal. Well, if you are doing directly from the uh, state to the optimal decision, uh, although during training, you may encounter a very small arrow, but uh, it's really hard to say how is your train neural network can to be generalized to a new scenario and there is no guarantee for the solution to be satisfying all the constraints as well as going to the optimization. Uh, for the answer is, uh, yeah, it's also a very good thing to consider in the future work. So essentially uh, the neural network itself can be used as a, a very powerful uh, learner for distribution like Bayesian learning or other learning areas. So we are still considering how to incorporate uncertainties during the training as well as the operation state. Okay, thank you. And maybe very briefly, a uh, last question from Nawaf yeah. Nazir. If I'm to summarize, uh, Nawaf is basically asking about extrapolation. So suppose you have this uh, PQ range, uh, yeah. which, which you don't see in your sample. So what do you yeah. do about that? Right. So yeah, uh, I think I can answer this both uh, briefly uh, by some uh, actual observations as well as some theoretical works. So basically uh, for observations, we actually uh, do some simulations over this unseen PQ data. Uh, we see the neural network can actually do some generalization 
and that is actually very good because uh, I think there, uh, because of those formulations, the neural network can do some generalization in some cases. And also there are some publications uh, in theory right now to say the neural network can actually generalize to some unseen region. Uh, but yes, definitely uh, we are implementing the data-driven method. We are very quite, uh, we need to be quite sure the neural network is a reliable learner as well as the uh, optimizer. So uh, there should be some future work to address the theoretical guarantees. And I hope that's answered. Okay. Okay. Is it